See my fish, Tim? <laughs> Got breakfast already, Tim. That's a nice one. Check this out. Okay. This is the first time I've ever slept in a hand. Sir? Really wanted to see the teepee. One of the greatest adventures I've been in. Looks so cool. Get under there, please. Better than a restaurant. And then you go like this. Never started a bow drill fire, eh? Never. From all the way from North Carolina to learn this one. He's gone! <laughs> well, yeah, I'm happy with that. Ready to go get schooled. Schooled? I think he's uh, liking the area. This whole week's been like being a kid again. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I'm meeting up with a man, Tim, uh, here in Canmore, Alberta. I'm gonna take him, uh, he's from North Carolina. I'm gonna take him up to Jasper today, show him some of the Rockies, and then get him out in the bush in my area fishing and test his survival skills. He says he's watched every one of my videos. And let's see how much he remembers and show him a few little tricks and helpers along the way. So, should be interesting. He's never seen the Rockies. He's gonna be just in awe. Wait and see. There's Tim. How's it going? Good, man. How about good to, you, bud? Good to meet you. You too. Uh, okay, so we're gonna head to Jasper. <laughs> this right. will be cool. Yeah. Leave Canmore here. And I'm telling you, this is an awesome view. This is oh, crazy, man. man you talking about a mountain city. This is it. I know, but you know, when I first moved here, I was here in 1980. Yeah. And it was such a small town, none of this was here. You didn't even know there was a town. It was just a few little buildings. For real? For real. Is that where you made your fortune at in uh, well, Sheet this Rock? Is, this is where my kids were born. For real? Yeah. And they're 35 now and 33, yeah. so. Okay, well, we'll get the show on the road. I got some. Do you no, like sparkling just, water? No. No. <laughs> no, you don't like I don't. <laughs> it's an acquired uh, taste, but. Yeah. We'll uh, stop along the way a few spots because he's going to want to see more. Oh, yeah. That's my there. grandbaby calling. Won't know oh, yeah. if I've seen Greg uh, Ovens yet. Oh. <laughs> I told her, I said, yeah, he's right here. Uh, you can get right. addicted to that, that, those mountains quick. Well, now you see why I didn't want to leave. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I don't want to go either. either. So. I've been sitting here trying yeah. to think how that I can keep on coming back up here. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of flying. <laughs> well, yeah. Tim and I went all the way to Jasper and the motel rooms were $400 a night. So I said, wow, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't think you wanted to do no, that. No, That's no, too no, much. No. no, we come out here to hang out in the bush, not to pay $400. $400 for a, for a motel. <laughs> so we drove all the way back and here we are at one of my favorite fishing spots, which is good, took all night drive. We actually did take a motel in Radium but we're gonna do some fishing here, uh, set up hammocks. Hopefully the mosquitoes aren't bad, but uh, I couldn't help notice Tim, he's wearing uh, one of Zach's wazoo necklaces. Ah, uh, yeah, I about wore it out on the back side of it, but the front side of it still looks like a good neck. Okay. But it works, that's cool. that's that, that, it works. It works. <laughs> it works. <It's>, it <laughs> it takes some practice, that's for sure. <laughs> but, but anyways, we're gonna, Hang out here for a couple of days. Uh, I'm here to play in the woods for the next uh, few days. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have a blast yeah. and uh, catch some fish, eat good. It's not a survival challenge, but I'm interested to see what what Tim remembers from watching my videos or Zach's videos and get him to do it on his own and maybe show him what's going wrong instead of, okay, this is how you do stuff. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, you know, because uh, you've seen enough videos, you probably should know by now. Yeah, 
Well, shucks. So, well, my daily routine is is after I come in from work and stuff like that, I'd ask my wife, I said, let's go see what Greg's doing. We'll turn on the TV and watch your video. And nine times out of ten is I'll get started on it and stuff like that. Then I'll fall asleep or something. I'll get my nap in. and then So I'll the come. videos are boring. No, no, no. <laughs> and they're, 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 they're peaceful. And uh, so then I'll wake back up and pick right back where we're at. Now, my wife will tell you uh, uh, over and over is that we done seen that in a hundred times. I said, well, let's watch it again because I missed it <laughs> when I took my nap in some of those spots. Okay. But I've watched them enough to... It's very hard to learn if you're napping during the video, so take, take <laughs> my, that from Tim. My subconscious was grabbing, was, was really, really getting a hold of it, you know. Okay, well. <laughs> so okay. I've got, I brought my toys with me. Uh, so yeah, I've been trying to work on all that stuff to get a, uh, to be pro-like at it, but I'm far from it, though. Well, that's why you wanted to have this trip and learn a few Practice makes so. perfect. Yeah. And you can't learn better than being out there doing it. You know, no, hands-on is not like reading a book. That's true. It isn't. Okay, well, we got a fire going. We're going to have something to eat. It's uh, getting later in the day. We haven't eaten yet, so. And I've been seeing them fish are jumping at And that, the Greg. fish are jumping, and if you don't catch a fish here, I'm losing <laughs> faith in your fishing abilities. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this has been a very rainy May. Right, in, We're getting near July. And it's been rainy and cold the whole last two months. So looks like rain again. We're going to set up this big 20 by 20 tarp so that kind of like me and Joe on the island, all it did was rain, get set up in case. That's what we'll do. Okay, so it's not 20 by 20, but... What is it? That 10 is about, by 20. I would say it's 10 by 8. Well, I got an idea. All right. Yeah. I thought it was a 20 by 20. That's one you did. But I got you one of them right there, too. I'm going to this one around. The guy's wrap here is different. That's nice. I got you one like that. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. I just ain't doing it. I yeah. thought I'd wait to find out where we are attached here. Yeah, I remember that you said that you know that I met that guy. Lars, Lars Fault. Uh -huh. Is this a yeah. fault? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I know Lars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he, he likes his birch wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember you yeah. telling me that. So I ran across that on Appalachian uh, Outfitters. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, shucks, I'll get me one in Greg. Nice, I appreciate it. Actually, that is excellent. Well, this is great. I love Lars Holt, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good, though. Well, he was good enough. He's a pretty famous bush, bush crafter, too, eh? Well, I, I never I never had heard of him until uh, you until, mentioned him. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, um, he's written survival books and stuff. Well, I've been promoting under big trees since day one. I like it under trees, and then you save all that work of a shelter. Once you're aware of stuff like that, is that every time you go into the woods, you're looking for them things. Yes. Now, see, that's what I'm doing. Every time I come in here, that's the first thing you do. First thing is when we pulled up in here, I looked for firewood. Mm -hmm. How do we get the wood to get a fire going? And the second thing was is I started looking for, you know, just natural shelters in case it was to start, one, raining before we got a camp set mm -hmm. up. Two is that what if it started little hail balls and stuff like that coming down? Yeah, yeah. I need to get, I don't, I don't, I don't find me a place to get to far before I need to get there. Well, at least you're paying attention to the videos. Well, yeah, if you watch them 5,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> wish everybody did. I'd be a millionaire. Well, hey, <laughs> you know, it's better to watch those over and over. You get watch reruns of stuff that ain't no good. Yeah, soap operas. Yeah. The battery and stuff. Wait. Be careful. I'm there. tripping. <laughs> Hey, another blooper, eh? <laughs> I just didn't lift my leg high enough to get over the top of the table. So, Tim's going to cook us up some bacon and eggs. Yeah, and I'm going to do it Greg style. Are you? Yeah. Like, what's uh, that? With my fingers. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> and sticks. That's, yeah, I got I was hoping for that. Uh-oh. You know, it's not done right unless <laughs> you do it. Got right. a little dirt with it. That's a, What is it? Iron in the, in the dirt? I think you get a little bit of everything. <laughs> Food poisoning, you name it. 
Yeah, but man, when you're a mountain man, you can handle it, right? Yeah, yeah. you're only sick for a few weeks. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's then right. you get back to bushcraft. That's right. Well, we did that stuff when we were kids anyway, you know. Yeah. We used to go, whenever we was kids, we used to, me and my brother used to go in behind the house down there. There's a good old mud hole every time it poured down the rain in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And we'd get down there and we'd make that stuff, just the mud pies and all that stuff. And we'd take and make a big balls out of it and sling it as hard as we could up against the house back there. Well, Mama, she, and we'd come in and, and Mom would see all the mess we got on our clothes and stuff like that. She'd just get all over us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when it was raining in the summertime, she'd back sit... before they had tide? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's back when Mama had to do it with her hands. Oh, yeah. And uh, so she, uh, she'd she tell us, now, boys, y'all get out there and get in that mud hole. I'm going to tire y'all up when y'all get back in here. Anyway, we'd, we'd sneak around, go through the woods first, and come in and behind the house where she couldn't see us going to the mud hole. And we'd get that mud hole and throw it back out. Well, Dad finally found those dry, padded up mud patties that we had thrown up against the house one day and me and my brother we got our tail tore up we didn't do much of that no more after that we yeah. kind of got off of the, we got off the mud pie but the thing about it is it didn't hurt us you know, we growed up just the same with all that mud on our hands and all yeah. that uh all that the, the misbehaving was a bad habit but well, but we made it through you were just kids having fun <laughs> yeah that's right like I said, it don't bother me. It's who's watching that's going to have to deal with it. <laughs> well, you know. But I think they'll be all right with it. You know. The best okay. thing about this is a uh, country boy from Mayberry. Man, that's hot right there, Doc. Turn the handle to the there, side so it's it not. Right Sometimes I put tin foil on the handle sure. so it doesn't get too hot. Ain't that leg sniffing a bunch of smoke? That'll take you out a while to sizzle. Mm -hmm. All right. And now the sun comes out. Good. Ain't that the way it usually is? Well, I hope the mosquitoes it's... don't come out. Well, yeah. I always mention mosquitoes about every third video. Oh, yeah? Because I don't like them. Neither do you. I do not. I'm not a mosquito fan at all. Matter of fact, I don't like bugs too good. Hmm. Uh, but, um... They're all part of part of life, part of nature, part it's of, part of, part of the experience. Know. You wasn't gonna mess with their bandana, man. They do too much with it. Just like the old cowboy. Well, Zach's got his smock and he uses that all the yeah, time. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. Now, see, I got some spam too. You like spam? Not really. I don't either, but it goes pretty good with your eggs and with especially if it's over easy eggs. It's got to go with something. I can't just eat it by itself. I'm not that, but man, shoot, we was raised up on Spam, potted meat. You've been watching my videos about uh, bush spatulas? <laughs> bush spatulas? Well, you made that spatula from wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, uh, I told my wife, is that I told her, I said, me and Greg, we can get along just fine. He uses sticks and I use sticks. There you go. To cook with, you know. Hey, I like the wood. Matter of fact, it's when I'm cheaper. at the house... I still use the wooden form, you know, the spoons and uh, you know that stuff to cook with. Because yeah. most of this slicky stuff, whatever you call it, on top of these frying pans, they you, know, you can't use metal or or silver or anything no, like that. You got it, yeah. yeah. And it'll ruin it. So you got to use wood. So that's true. Right. All you got to do is make sure your sticks clean. Ah, I don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Huh? That right there didn't cost me nothing either. So pretty good. That's good stuff. Right on. That's as good as you got it snappy lunch. Or McDonald's or anywhere. Well, it's better than McDonald's. In my opinion, <laughs> that is. Better for you, too. Yeah, yeah, that too. Let's try that bacon right We're there. gonna get some fish tonight, Tim, too. Mm. We will. We might have us a fish for a late night snack. That would be perfect. I got you a new toy. I don't know, it's supposed to float. Let's see. Okay, I'll throw it off the dock for you. Let's see. Hmm. 
That fin, he's a good swimmer. So Tim brought me a gift, a knife. I got you a couple of gifts here. Oh, okay. We'll so bring out we'll bring out the jam to start with. He got me a Lars fault knife, and remember I met Lars. There's a just like the this same uh, uh, birch pocket knife, nice. And it's got our, the uh, birch wood handle. That's cool, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. You didn't have to come bearing gifts, but well, I ran across that and I seen on your video where you liked the uh, uh, Lars, Lars fault knives are good, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I went ahead and got me one too. So now we're knife brothers. Knife brothers. <laughs> <laughs> we got the same knife. Though. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And That's then I also nice. got you a, ma a Mount Airy a shirt, t-shirt. That's Mount Mayberry. Yeah. Okay. Now see, uh, now, now Andy Griffin's Mayberry uh, originated storyline come out of Mount Airy. Cause see Mount Airy, nice. you got Snappy Lunch. Snappy Lunch been there forever. That darling gang that comes down into Mayberry, if you ever watch Mayberry, well that's my family right there. Oh, take my word for it, Mr. Uh, darling. <laughs> <Big one. Nice. laughs> <laughs> so he's related to the people it, off Andy Griffith. Well, it, 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 yeah, pretty much, probably. Yeah. And here's the uh, uh, my wife. Uh, and she wrote that she book. Wrote, she wrote this book, but she wrote it uh, uh, several years ago. She went to work in the burn unit. And a lot of the stories that's in her, these are real true stories of people who had near-death experiences or had really traumatized situations and experiences but these stories right here talk about how, you know, uh, uh, God's involved in those things and, and what they experienced. They're, they're tremendous stories, really inspirational. We just wanted to give it to you. She's got, uh, uh, she, wrote, she wrote in it or whatever. It's just a compiled group of true stories, and a lot of them is, is that she worked with them while she was in the burn unit. So okay, I think man. you'll enjoy it, man. We'll check it out, and others will too. Very good. <laughs> You gotta go ahead with it. Ah, boy, Finn. Get that coon. He doesn't oh. see it in the waves, probably. Oh, there, there, he found it. No. There you go. That's good. Right there. I got us some tea. Oh well, we're gonna make wild tea. We don't. We don't need store-bought tea. <laughs> We're in the bush. We need store-bought tea. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna like it. We're ready to go get schooled. Schooled? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we kept a few pan fries. This little guy, I didn't want to keep him, but he was hooked too bad. Um, Tim got two, the bigger two actually. And we got five, we're going to cook them up. They're biting good like always, but I wish I would have been able to let a couple go. The two of them were hooked too bad. There's no point putting them back and they're just going to die and go to the bottom and rot. So if a fish is small, it's still edible. I'm not going to let it go if it's just going to die. And uh, But anyways, the camera on the GoPro died when we were out there, so I didn't get any uh, video of Tim catching his fish. But he uh, got two. I got uh, I let one go. I got four. Actually, I let two go. I got five. But we're going to not keep more than what we can eat. We'll cook these up right away. Should be good. So oh, Tim's going to attempt to get... Uh, fire going with his uh, ferro rod. I actually gave him an ovens Rocky Mountain uh, bushcraft ferro rod as well. Cody Saskatchewan Fisher, I know I still owe you a ferro rod because you were the first guy to catch a fish on the contest. And I have the materials, I just have to get it engraved so it will be on its way. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to try to make a hundred of them up when I get an opportunity. So you all might have an opportunity to buy them, but it'll be limited edition because uh, it's getting very hard to get the ferro rod material and to find enough antler material. Not easy, but I am going to make a few. 
Now let me see if I well what we can get right here. Everything ain't uh, now you can. This is really good stuff. This is bone bread. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't know, we'll collect as much. I'll put all that up I said I wasn't going to give him any tips, but man, that's I... the stuff you want. Here, let's get this out. That should go. Good We're better. rocking now. Better. A little bit of adobo. I say a little bit, but actually a lot is good. Nice would have been better. Never started a bow drill fire, eh? Never. Never even thought about a bow drill. Never, uh, now I've seen it in pictures and stuff like that. I buy those um, survival magazines and uh, Pioneer oh, yeah. magazines every now and then. That's a darn high. So I just get them every now and then. But I really enjoy, I enjoy the pictures in them. Okay, <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm excited to give it a whirl and then, uh, but now the thing about it is, is, you'll get it. Once you go to doing it, my thinking is, is once you go to doing it, you, Practice makes perfect, and mm -hmm. and once you succeed, find out what would make it better or easier. Now, I don't know about that. Uh, this looks knots. really this looks really good, but without breaking it, try to clean those off a little bit. Yeah. You're going to want to spin down here anyway, uh -huh. but if your string gets up here, just try to clean that, especially yeah. that knot up. Yeah, I was seeing. That's what I was. Uh, yeah. uh, and I've got a fire board I've had for a couple of weeks, so. I hate being left out of, uh, you know, bushcraft skills, so I'm going to make a kit, too. I'm going to get on it. You can get on it, buddy. We'll do it together, man. How we'll do that? it together. That way I can watch you and perfect mine. Exactly. Sounds good. How did you sleep? Uh, I slept great. You did? I did. Okay, well, I like hammocks. Man, I'm telling you. Look at this, he's got the coffee going, too. This is, this is a novelty for me. Yeah, now, I don't know about my campfire coffee making skills. As long as you got lots in there. But no, it's got, it'll have caffeine. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't use uh, decaf. <laughs> <laughs> it'll get us, it'll get us our little, little bit of a jump story. Good. Perfect. <laughs> Just working on my bowl drill. I think I got a straight one. So it's been raining most of the day, and uh, we went for a little drive, but it wasn't very nice. So you just sit around, you find little projects to do. I've been working on whittling a spoon. It's actually turning out really nice. 
not quite done. But yeah, I'm happy with that. See who has to spend five dollars on fifty plastic ones. <laughs> yeah, have a coffee before bed, I guess. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. Finn. No, no, no. Okay, come here and I'll throw it. Come. Okay, let me see that. Ha <laughs> ha. Getting close to supper time, man. Yeah, anytime you want. This is one of the better parts of the day. It is. In the evening, sitting there, I call to tell uh, my wife it's the golden time of the day because it looks like everything in the sky just turns goldish. All of the night creatures coming on duty and starting to sing mm -hmm. through the night. Yeah, it's a like, peaceful time. The only aggravating and frustrating thing about it is most time is a mosquito. <laughs> uh, they, I notice that they seem to have disappeared again. We don't have many, I know that. No, I, mean, they, they, uh, they I think the fire help is, is helping it. I'll come in. There's an hour or two uh, that's bad, yeah. and then about Lighten this up. time of night, they seem to disappear. Yeah. So that's well, always a bonus when they disappear. Yeah. Maybe uh, of maybe. course, I mention it on the video so many times how I hate mosquitoes, but I don't think anybody likes them. No, I don't. I mean, who does? I mean, why would they? <laughs> you know, they're, they're not lovable at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, good morning. Oh, I had a good sleep. I slept in, I know that. I could hear uh, Tim uh, chopping wood and made the fire. That was a while ago. I don't hear him now. I think he went for a walk. But I hope he made coffee. And maybe I'll go and uh, see about catching breakfast. My hair is quite the mess. Comb my hair and uh, have a coffee and get out and catch breakfast. This is day three. And uh, I'm not sure what Tim wants to do. I'm kind of just seeing what he wants to learn and seeing, uh, you know, what he would like to do. We've had some talks about he would like to maybe make a shelter and do an overnight. We'll see. But I think he's uh, been working on his bow drill kit. We'll see if he has success with that too. Lots to do and uh, some more time yet. He'll be here another four days or so. So we can find lots of projects to do. Sleep okay again? I do. I could not get out of bed. <laughs> I was so comfortable I didn't want to get out of bed. And that's what we're out here for. Relax, that's, that's rest, right. Dan. Wow, it's so peaceful here. It is. Well, this right here no can't. traffic noise, no sirens going off. The thing about it is, is that it don't cost nothing to come up here but gas. And if you've got your feet, two feet, you can walk out in nature, get all the peace and quiet you want. So you went for a walk, I think, I eh? I did. Walked around the pond. It's beautiful out in there. This did you just, go up how No, far? I didn't get across the, over there. I went down this way, and then we went back that way. Uh-huh. And I thought I'd try to see if I couldn't scare up some worms, but I was unsuccessful at it. Uh -huh. I don't know where your worm secret is out in there, but I couldn't <laughs> find it. Go, careful, careful. show you what I'm up to here got an idea and a simple little thing I'll wait till I get over there to show you we will see and what I want to do is split this log it's about oh 15 feet long but with these lodgepole pine a lot of times you can see it's got a natural crack like most the length and so I want to be able to make something, maybe a table, uh, whatever I want to make, I haven't decided yet. But I want to split this so we have a one flat surface. 
So I'm going to take these wedges. I might need a couple more and I'm going to pound them in in different spots down and you pound them in and I can split this the whole 15 feet and have a flat surface on one side for either a seat, build a table, whatever. Put them a couple of feet apart. Now this is a pretty big lodge pole about well, 15 inches around even. The crack maybe goes a quarter of the way through so it should split fairly easily using these wedges. See it opening up. Broke that wedge. Might have to put this one here. Use the other one. It's going. Look at that. Still pressure on this one but we've got it three quarters of the way now I can just move my wedges down it's got a second split here but that's okay there she goes look at that Okay, we split that whole tree with wedges, 15 feet long. Looking for flies with a stick in his mouth. cedar it's good we found that piece because that's perfect you're gonna you're gonna see how it's the best wood right because if you try it with the other woods we were gonna do like the pine uh -huh. this is so soft you get powder and smoke five times faster it's very good yeah well faster is better on this situation. well bow drills you want the best wood yeah and cedar is not very common around here but uh since we were in the cedar forest, Why not? I mean that chunk, we're just carving our uh, drills out of a chunk of flat cedar we found uh, yesterday on our drive. So we're going to make a real attempt to get Tim his first bow drill fire. And cedar is the ticket. Well it certainly is a pretty easy to whittle. Yes, it is very soft. And that's what makes it so good for bow drill because it creates a lot of powder for your uh, coal and very easily within three spins of the drill you usually have smoke right there. now how thick do i need to get that well i, I mean need, i got a den in it a dip but do just, i need to work that, that out that work it out get it as round as possible uh this is a good size you can be that thick if you want but I mean, this is about the size I like. Yeah. You don't want it so thin it's going to break. Right. So I mean, this thickness is fine if you have enough room on your fireboard. Right. That's all. Good deal. <clears throat> well, I still got a little bit more whittling to do, but at least we're on the right track, yeah. heading in the right direction. The main thing is where your string is going to spin. Just try to keep it uh, fairly round. Right. But you see, because we're using these pieces, it's not going to be crooked where it's, right. you know what I mean? Right. So even if it's not perfectly round, right. it won't be wanting to do this, gotcha. wobbling. Gotcha. Yeah. So I got my log ready to go. I'm going to make the first attempt so Tim kind of gets the idea. Again, everything just holds itself in place. Sometimes you got to stabilize uh, the log a bit. This is actually the log that we were using for firewood 
and the far end of it is the one that I split with the wedges. I was looking around for logs and Tim says, well, what about this one? It turns out to be the one that we cut for firewood and that I split. And it seems to be about the right pressure. So I'll give him a demonstration and then get him to try his bow drill kit. So I already have all my stuff. Dry rotted stump, like always. Now it's starting to slide a bit. Once it spins a few times, it gets easier. Like, as far as, see we got smoke already. Mm -hmm. That's when you want to go fast. Mm. Should have her by now. What's going on? My board. Me drill. And my bow. Now the hard part is, is trying to figure out how that sucker comes back on. There we go. You got her. Like that. Ah, uh, your wedge came out. Ah, I did. Where'd it go? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we have to make a new one. A little tricky if you're not. You don't know Try what, to go to the middle. <laughs> you don't know what in the world you're doing. Well, it's... Kind you know of what? Hey, you can't <laughs> know everything right off the bat. You gotta... That's, you got it pretty tight. Yeah, but you need it fairly tight. It'll, it'll be good once you get that. That's good. It's still going to work. I'm going to try not to assist you. Okay. So, and then the thing is, try to get the fireboard underneath the log. Maybe put the log under your knee till you get it set up. Okay. It came apart on you again. You need about you six hands to do this. Well, once it's in place, <laughs> you're good to go. Get out of the way, Finn. And then you have to find the hole. And then you got to straighten everything out. Oh. Uh oh. And the wedge came out too. My Georgia will fix it that way. There we go. <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a rat. Okay, now, as long as it's straight, and then just kind of stabilize that when you, when you start spinning it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put pressure on it. All right. Just try to keep it straight. There you go. A little faster now, because you're starting to see smoke. Now's when you want to go fairly fast. There you go. Now keep that up for a bit and you should get it. Except the wind's not helping us. Keep going. Just keep going. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, use two hands. <laughs> you own the thing. There you go. Yeah, as fast and hard as you can. I want you to get it, so keep going. <laughs> Okay, you might have her. Jeez, and crackers. I think you got her, Tim. You know, we just with this wind, we got to be careful too. The wind does not help us, <laughs> but we will not give up. We have to get in better shape to do these. <laughs> and this is the easy way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this powder because it was already starting to burn even mm -hmm. you want to keep that because that'll even be better than your um, dry rotted stump which one let's clean this up a bit you're going to want to sharpen this end again because it's getting pretty blunt and you carve this off flat so it's going to sit up higher again in the notch mm -hmm. or in the I almost bored just, a hole all the way through it. I know, because it's a soft wood cedar. Mm -hmm. So, if you're going to give it a second attempt, mm -hmm. now you want to do that. Okay. And see, it'll sit up higher again. I'll sharpen this in for you a bit. You, you had it for, it almost went. Well, it was going. It just didn't stay going. You don't, hey, you don't, you know, it took me a hundred times to get my first one at 13. It did. 
But I was yeah. 13. But you were 13. <laughs> Young. You should get it on the second one. <laughs> All right. Round two. two. Oh, she flipped out because I think you lift up on the log a bit. It broke. broke the tip off. You should never get discouraged if you don't get a bow drill fire the first, the second, the tenth time. Just keep trying, using the principles, and eventually you will get it, and you'll learn what works best for you and whatever. Round three. You just try now to how many of y'all think I'm going to be able to do it on three? <laughs> what do you think, Greg? I don't know, but it's not easy always. Lift up, no, don't put pressure down. Lift up if it's, it's getting down low on you. There you go. The spring might have got a little loose on you, but keep going. At least you can use two hands. Yes, I'll but I'm helping holding. you. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's check well, I know the gas tank's empty. Great day. Oh, you drilled a hole right through your board, too. Well, I got the hole drilled. Tim, you got her. Woo! Oh, yeah, I'm too tired to, to finish it. You see, you got her. Now, put this powder when you start to see red. You got her, Tim. Third try. Not yet. Don't smother it. When you do Wait till you see a red glow. All right. You'll see the coal come to the top, mm -hmm. then keep adding. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> How about that? Don't worry about your fireboard. We don't care if it catches on fire. You got, you got. We got to have a fire. Yes. We got to have a fire. Use your black powder, and then I've got some dry rotted stump for you. See that? How about that, bro? Hey, hey, hey. We well, did it. Came all the way from North Carolina to learn this one. You should do that, right? <laughs> Always you remember. Got, you still got something. Sometimes it's just better to do two instead of one. Well, you see, like, it's it's tricky. Bow drill can be tricky, okay? And I suggest don't even move it off of here. People say, okay, you throw it in your bundle and, mm -hmm. and this and that. Mm -hmm. Why? You can put this behind to get your fire. Mm -hmm. Why disturb it? That's right. It's getting big. It's getting bigger. It's a growing. Just keep getting it bigger. Because now, you can get that coal this big if you That's want right. by just adding this material. Now, cold, weary, tired, exhausted, but I got hope. Hopes are brewing right there. Don't blow the coal right out. Right because you can get your coal back with mm -hmm. this. If you blow it right out, you're done. Then you gotta start over again. Whoo wee we don't want that if we don't have to. So just put that behind, what you like this, and then just blow into that. Come on, start, start. And I got a mega of coal right there. You're gonna get it, just keep going. You wouldn't give up if it was cold out. No. Okay, and don't blow the coal out. We can always get it back. Is it getting small? Coal's getting small. Let's, uh, we don't want to lose our coal. You do not want to attempt this again. I'm going to make sure that you don't lose your coal. See, the coal died on here. So, what do you got here? I got coal in there. I don't know why that thing ain't starting. Well, is it damp? We almost lost it. Damn it. Try to dig up some of this black powder off of here as quick as possible. We have to be very careful now. There is just a smidgen left. Mm. But it should have gone. It's all in the blowing too. Now that's another another uh, important part of it. Is knowing how fast you want to be steady. And then at the end you want to give a, a puff. Mm -hmm. So that you just give it that extra 
kick. But we salvaged what, what was ate. hardly there. There was mm. nothing left of that coal. Nothing. Oh, damn boy, this ain't never done this before. But well, you got her, though. But, you got uh, her with a little I'll help. It's fine. I'll sure be doing her some more. Well, now that you, and you, you know you got your bowl drill kit now. I got a hole all the way through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got well, you got your you got your coal just in time yeah. because you drilled a hole right. But that's the cedar. It's yeah. so soft. Okay. Yeah. So keep working on that. You need some good we've powder. Had rain, we've had rain all There's day. Some good powder from yeah, okay. from when I attempted. When you get your coal, we'll put this on top, uh -huh. and then blow same as you did, and I think you'll get her this time. I'll just have well, as soon as it turns red. As soon as it turns red. Mm -hmm. As soon as you see red, then give her a go. I think that grass will help you. There we ah, go. Ah, there she goes. Woo! Look at that, Mama. <laughs> Old Tim boy got it. <laughs> there you go. With Greg. All right. We you gonna did get her. we gonna get warm tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You did her, buddy. I'm yeah. happy for you. <laughs> there we go. Tim's first bow drill fire. Tim and I are going to get out. Catch breakfast. The sun finally came out. It rained a lot last night. It was raining hard all morning. We got a break in the weather, so let's get out and catch breakfast while we have a chance. Seems to be raining a lot lately. Okay, so I got mine first cast. Tim had one on first cast too, but it got off right at the boat. We just need a couple for breakfast and uh, that's all we really need. See my fish, Tim? <laughs> I'd say that. We got breakfast already, Tim. That's a nice one. There we go. And I just caught another one. So we're getting double headers here. That's breakfast. The only bad thing about them biting like this, uh -huh. in you know, five minutes, done. you're <laughs> you done fishing. You. You're done. Throw that in okay. the well, we, we got our breakfast anyway. So. Okay, I'll dispatch them. So I got my two. Um, Tim got a fairly nice one. It's a nice, calm, calm morning on the lake. That's what I like. I got his second one. There you go. That's not bad. We can call her quits and go have breakfast now. Here, let's see. All right. Well, I think we're good. We got her. Chow time. Breakfast. Check this out. Okay. Yeah, blow hard so we can see how it works good. There we go. So what this is, is a hollow stem of uh, cow parsnip we collected. Cut a couple pieces You put it into two pieces, slides into each other. And of course the cow parsnip, when they're dead like that, is uh, hollow. So kind of like the same idea as those blowers extendable that you buy. That's pretty cool. We just decided to collect that the other day. Okay. It makes a good fire blower.
All right, Liz, I hadn't seen Sasquatch yet, by the way. I got something kind of close to it. Right there. <laughs> no. Uh, I just want to show you some of the tools we made, spoons and forks and whatever that Tim and I made. Actually, I like this uh, whittling stuff, Zach, so you, I'm going to have to uh, do more of it. It's pretty fun, actually. But I'm not going to make a chest set, probably. Spatula, big fork, three spoons. I made two spoons. Uh, Tim made one. It's a fun way to spend time. Hey, well, I brought Tim to a uh, spot to do a little gold panning on the Finley. He's never done any gold panning, so we'll show him a few colors at least, eh? And uh, it's always something fun. Put the water in there, take it back and forth, break the play up, break it a couple times, quickly. Gold's heavy, eh? So it goes to the bottom right away. But you gotta be gentle still. You just have to be gentle. By now, the gold should be at the bottom. Show you how you look for it. You know? No way you think. So basically, you get it like that, and then you just switch one way, this way. There's a little, little color. Lots of little guys, see? One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Lots of little guys. Sometimes you get big teeth. Oh, there's the biggest. Oh yeah, we'll get some bigger ones. There. Oh, there's a few of them. Look. See? There's gold. How about this? Look at that. Yeah, we got quite a few just in one chunk. I'll get my container because I'm collecting it. What I'm going to do is get enough gold and make a fishing lure. And catch a fish for the solid gold fishing. Melt it down, right? What are you going to do if you get a snag? It's going to be an expensive class. No, you go in after him, old bro. So I brought Tim down here to see the teepee. And I've been showing him sights on the way. I think he's uh, liking the area. He really wanted to see the teepee. So he got a chance to come up and see some of the things I made. My blanket from the one video still here. But I'm going to get a fire going and cook up some ribs. Try to have a nice dinner before he heads uh, out. So I always uh, boil my ribs first before I barbecue them. I don't know what you folks do, but I don't know, that's the way my mom used to do it, so I'm just in the habit of doing that. Well, I did put it out a bit, but it'll come back hopefully. <laughs> Maybe not. I might have just done put the fire out. Talking like you know, Tim. <laughs> I just done do that. I rub off on paper, you know. Huh? <laughs> I said I rub off on paper. Yeah, I put the fire out. You know, I gotta fire, start the fire, fire again. <laughs> so Tim would like to know how to make cordage from the dog bane, and uh, fortunately, I still have some that I've been uh, keeping for an occasion like this. So your fibers are in the inside, okay? Mm -hmm. First thing you gotta do and it can be tough to get started. You try to break these. Sometimes you gotta, you just gotta use something to get it started, like the ax. Oh, I see. See, all the way to the end. And then you usually get about four pieces. That's your strands. One, get rid of the wood, all the way. You see, there's your fiber, see? That's right here. The, the, one of the most time-consuming parts is just getting 
preparing the fibers mm -hmm. for the cordage because you have to do this each time. But you know what? It's like that whittling we did. Right. It's fun. Right. So your fibers are going to be in here. So you take now and you just wind this back and forth mm -hmm. bit by bit. Mm -hmm. See, there's our fibers. And that looks all good. You've got some nice fibers. Mm -hmm. So now, what I like to do is stagger where you're going to splice. Have one up higher than where... Because you don't really want to join them all in the same spot. Right. So I'd start here. Mm -hmm. And I twist this up. Mm -hmm. And then you twist it enough until it makes a loop. Gotcha. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Now you hold the loop like this. Mm -hmm. So now with each strand, start with this one, you twist away. Sometimes you've got to damp your fingers mm -hmm. to get it to twist. So you twist, mm -hmm. twist, mm -hmm. and then you go like this. You, you come back this way, you twist away, yeah. and then like that, and with each strand. And then you keep moving your fingers, and then you're going to start getting... Oh, I see, yeah, see? yeah. Mm -hmm. Twist, up. Mm -hmm. Twist, up. Yeah, here, let me mm -hmm. try that. So you twist one side like yes, that. Yes, exactly. Then do, do like that, then Exactly, pinch. exactly. And then, then do twist. the same with the other one. Then you twist, mm -hmm. just like exactly. that. Exactly. Then pinch. Yeah, and keep moving your fingers down because you're going to be making length. So yeah, no, you're doing it right. And sometimes you watch that this doesn't get all tangled in itself as you go to. But hey, it's cool. Look at that, Mama. Making rope. I'm making rope. This is tough. You got to concentrate. <laughs> you do. Yeah. My attention span lasts about half of a nap. <laughs> In other words, it don't. It ain't long. <laughs> so the piece you're working on would be pretty strong. If I were making fishing line, this mm -hmm. is about how thick I would use. Right. Um, that's a whole lot thinner yeah. than what I got. Oh yeah. yeah. See that's more like what you want for fishing with. Right. Right? Mm. Yeah, this is very relaxing. It is. Uh, even though that is, it's kind of like back whenever we were kids and stuff. We used to have to, we'd all sit around and snap beans. <laughs> or after we picked them from the garden and <laughs> talk and that's how you found out who your kin were and what they were doing. <laughs> Grandma knew everything about them. <laughs> well, yeah, grandmas knew everybody and everything, eh? Yeah. Everything about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. This whole week's been like, like being a kid again. Yeah. I hope you had fun. That's I mean. I've had a blast. Life is so serious and sometimes so challenging. Get back to simplicity makes a world of difference in a person. Can you see the little lines? I can see. No, you see, isn't that, uh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, do. And that's yeah. what I like about making cordage. It just looks so cool when it's done. Yeah. Fun, no? Yes, it is. It's mm -hmm. always nice to be able to host folks and show them around Mayberry, you know. <laughs> now Mayberry's got a big, uh, they, like I said, they've turned into a little bit of a tour, tourist area. And uh, so we get a lot of tourists coming through down there to see downtown and see Andy Griffith's oh, yeah. home place and all that stuff. All right. They still got his house there, you know. <laughs> and uh, so people go in and then people pay to stay all night in that house. <laughs> it's just a little bit, man, that, that TP ain't well, much I could charge people to stay in the TP, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been good. And also Donna Fargo. You ever hear of Donna Fargo? No. Now Donna Fargo was a, was a pretty famous uh, uh, country music singer. She mm. was from that area. You're from that area? I, I'm from that area, but nobody knows Tim Glenn. <laughs> they will now, though, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Ways to go yet, though. Oh, yeah. Well, we still got to barbecue them. 
Let's see, this makes them more tender, tender. too. Yeah. You going to the Yukon? No, I'm going to Smithers. Oh, yeah, that's it. See, really good. See, see, see get out of there, please. You'll get a bone to chew on, but get out of there, please. It's not for you right now. That's okay, eh? Get bone. Real good. Good egg. Better than a restaurant. Oven's restaurant. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I heard in the bush. And that's right. <laughs> One thing about eating on the hood, you don't have to watch your table matter. <laughs> that's the <a> thing. <laughs> Thank you. Morning. Well, that was a uh, very nice sleep in the uh, hammock here at the teepee. You might be thinking, why didn't you stay in the teepee? But actually, there was a lot of mosquitoes, and with this bug netting, it uh, keeps the mosquitoes out pretty good. Uh, Tim has to head uh, back to town and get his wife, who's going to stay for a week, and then he'll show her the sights that I've shown him. Show her that. And uh, myself, I'm going to head up to the Bear Rescue Center. And... Uh, that's about it for this video, I guess. But I'll show you our setup here. He's got his hammock over there. He said he's never slept better in his life, is what he said. So, pretty cool. I think he had a great time. He learned a few things, caught a few fish, and just really enjoyed just getting out in the bush. And now it's a beautiful sunny day. Of course, it's uh, the end of the trip here. It's been rainy off and on quite a bit. But... And get packed up and uh, get on with other adventures. Don't eh? Soft served eggs. Red and beauty. As long as you had a good time. Man, I've had a great time. It's been, uh, it's been a fantastic time. One of the greatest adventures I've been on. And I still got all my fingers, mm -hmm. even though we sawed on some of them. <laughs> I don't think we got video of that. No, we probably did. Mm -hmm. But it healed up real good. We put that, what is it, plantain? Plantain, yep. Mm -hmm. Plantain on it. Held it up pretty good. Here's the flies again. <laughs> There's Tim's hammock. He said his back hasn't been so good in years sleeping in the hammock. There he is. Coming through the bush over there. So how'd you sleep in that hammock? I did good. Uh, matter of fact, it was uh, more comfortable than the bed back home. We got a good bed. <laughs> I really love it. I've, uh... Well, ever since I've been sleeping in hammocks, I don't want to sleep on a bed. Yeah, and this is the first time I've ever slept in a hammock. Yeah. Most of the time, whenever we did any camping or anything, we did it in tents and stuff. And yeah. Air mattresses. No more. You've ruined well, me. See, you'll have to string one right in the house. Yep. <laughs> I can do that in my office. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tim. Glad you came. Man, I had a great time. Good to see you. We had a great time. You sure did. And uh, Tim's got to pick his wife up. I got to get up to the Bear Rescue Center. So thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you on the next one. <laughs>